supposed to use distilled water if you use an any pot. Yeah. Because if you put pump tap water, depending on where you live, through your nostrils, near your brain, you can get an infection. My, and my die. tap water is actually pretty good. We did a blind taste test the other day. Full deaf guy. Yeah. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> good thing he doesn't listen to this. <laughs> All right. So, what's the most excited you guys have ever been for a uh, for a product? It doesn't have to be game, but uh, I feel like. I feel like we all have our heads on pretty straight when it comes to like expectations. The Pokedex. For things. No, the number two the po- pencil. <laughs> <laughs> the, wait, I think I had that same yeah. Pokedex. I was real excited for it and then I got it. It was trash. You were also the little eight. red thing with the pixelated. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that thing was awesome. Are you kidding me? I think. I don't remember the first issue of that being good. It was probably never good. <laughs> I'm just saying. It was so you hit awesome. a button and it was like, that's a Pikachu. I think, and I was like, I'm not even looking at a Pikachu. I, I, think, I, think, the, shit. I think the first Pokemon movie was way more disappointing than that thing. First Pokemon movie is a is the best uh, movie <sighs> <It's> not, ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I would say we, we, for the most part, have a pretty good understanding of business and like the customer relationship surrounding it. But yeah. hey, I'm I'm sure we've all felt tricked at some point before as well. Yeah. Right? Um, when like Pokedexes or one of our friends who listened to the show tricked me into buying the video game Brink many years ago. <laughs> and he was a manager at like, GameStop. That game is and, not good. Uh, yeah. I wish I could buy sixty dollars worth of some sort of flesh eating animal and give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> I guess mine would, well, I guess mine is a, a game related thing. Mine would probably be the Wii. Uh, have you ever saw those old trailers for the Wii where the people are like diving around their living room being like, woo, I'm playing Red Steel or whatever. And then you play it and you're like, <laughs> it's all like See? <laughs> freaking out. And now you learn your lesson. Now you understand that technology will never work like that. Yeah, <laughs> technology true. will never be that fun. I mean, they, they, <laughs> you're not allowed to do, uh, the Penny Arcane, I think, coined the term like, Bullshot, right? Like the the CG game commercials, like the old Call of Duty ones, where it yes. would be yeah, you're not allowed to do that. Which is gonna come up, is a it? Bit later. Oh, <laughs> wait, like actually have fake gameplay. Yes, like, that's yeah. meant to look like real gameplay. Like Killzone that's Two, that, yeah. They're like, hey, the PS3 is capable of this, and you're like, is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember that Killzone Two thing. That was it's a phenomenal trailer, it not at all reflective of no. what that game is. Oh, that game series is trash. It, it kills so okay. is the PlayStation and all human beings. <laughs> Whoa. Sorry, we're just celebrating yeah, PC direction. for life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, what's up, everybody? This is Hot Button, and today we're going to talk about everybody's most anticipated game of 2013, 2014, and 2015, as well as everybody's most hated game of 2016, followed up uh, by everybody's most rescued game of 2017. All of these, by the way, being the same action adventure space exploration survival game, No Man's Star Sky. Star Citizen. <laughs> we'll do an episode on that. No, one. that's going to be the most an- uh, anticipated game up until 2025. And then <laughs> riots are going to burn America down. <laughs> you know, it's about time. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I talked over you. you no, just you're fine. No Man's Sky. <laughs> no Man's Sky. Uh, an ambitious indie title catapulted into the AAA blockbuster spot after grabbing the attention of one of the three major game giants, along with millions of players, both casual and not with the nearly impossible promise of giving a massive, open-ended universe made up of over 18 quintillion procedurally generated planets for them to explore and name all for themselves. Um, Some of us soon learned during development that that game may not actually be what it seemed, while others found this out the hard way. Um, I am Randall Beatrice, and I'm here with Chris Anantuano. What up? And returning host, Austin Blakesley. Uh, so, Austin, why don't you tell us the story of Hello Games' No Man's Sky? All right. Well, in order to tell the story of No Man's Sky, you got to start with Hello Games. Good name for a company. Yes. I, yeah, <laughs> Hello I like Games. They, by the way, these guys, the two guys that founded No Man's Sky, one of them you probably don't know, and one of them you probably do. Is one of them the face of, like, One of them, the Sean Murray. Okay. The, yeah. the guy... He is just the the sweetest, happiest oh, guy ever. That makes and so much more And we are tragic. going to chronicle the destruction of his psyche <laughs> today. Uh, One of my favorite things I saw is somebody made like his face out of something in No Man's Sky. Or <laughs> like an entire face. species. Yeah, of, uh, all right, oh, so Hello Games was founded in 2008 by Sean Murray and Grant Duncan. Yeah, you said it's an English company. Uh, yes, they were founded in Guildford, England. Okay. Um, and their first game was released in 2010. I don't know if you guys have played it. It's a game called Joe Danger. I do remember this game. Yes. Yeah, it, it's like Trials, but not as good. It's like Trials, it's okay. but it's a, yeah. it's, it's a cartoony game where you play like a vi- like a movie. It's a movie stunt, stunt man. character. Yeah. 
The style and, didn't really like, go. I like it. the nameless ragdoll uh, star <laughs> of. Uh, <laughs> they did a sequel trials. as well. I think Joe Danger to the movie. Yes, which was also a game, but and then Joe Danger Infinity, which was I a, don't even when did that come out? Was an auto running game for oh. iOS did that came out it? during No Man's Sky's development. Oh, that's what they were doing during. Yeah. That. <laughs> um. So yeah, that game came out in 2010. Uh, sequel came out in. I want to say 2012. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the sequel came out like right before No Man's Sky was revealed. Yeah. So cut. We're going to fast forward to what was then referred to as the VGX Awards. Right. I can't believe uh, how far back this story goes. Yeah, that was the year that they tried to get rid of the audience. And they had like... Is it still that, on that TV? Was the, it was on Twitch. Okay. And it was the, it was the year that GTA came out. So mm. they had like Waves and Tyler the Creator presenting. Right, that was so funny. And Joel and they McHale were, and they were hosted like it. Super baked on yeah. this. So it was just, it was like, just like Waves like, and Tyler the Creator being like, ah, I don't know, I didn't even play this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems um, pretty cool. <laughs> but at one point, Jeff Keighley just gets on camera and says, "We have a new God game to show him, everybody." And then Sean Murray walks out and mm-hmm. introduces himself. And then he shows a trailer, and in the trailer, it starts with the phrases. I watched this. Yeah, Yeah, it starts with like the phrase, every something procedural. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it goes through every, it's like every rock procedural, every plant procedural. (laughs) And then it like does like a little ticker thing where it flashes and it says every planet procedural, every planet unique, every planet unexplored. And then it cuts to them underwater with a bunch of fish floating around, which we will learn was not in the game when it came out. And then, yeah, we all, you know, like spore. And then they surface. And five ships fly overhead, which was also not in the game when it came out. No, no, it wasn't. And then uh, he gets in a spaceship and he flies out to space and he meets three other people who are also flying into the same space. And then a giant space battle ha- space battle happens around this big freighter. And then yeah. the freighter zip jumps out of the system and then they yeah, all follow yeah. him. And it was like it, it was there just, was emphasis around that space combat. Yeah. It looked like, like a Star Fox. And then there was thing. you know there was like. He goes down to another planet, and there's a giant snake that comes out of the ground. And it's yeah. like all this stuff in a game that he would later go on to say that they would never do a trailer like that because it was in, <coughs> disingenuous to the procedurally generated nature because you can't guarantee every player will experience stuff like that. Yeah. But this first yeah. trailer had like giant animals running out of things, and it was all it was all very tailored. To show off like, direct, the best that, it, that could be there. Look anti- yeah. Yeah. But of course. <clears throat> obviously, people took the wrong things from this trailer. Took it very literally. Yes. Yeah. They they saw these tiny little ships all flying around like a crashed freighter, and they thought, oh, those are all players. <clears throat> Turns mm-hmm. out those are the little sentinel things that come down. And, yeah. It's like the wanted level thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And they saw the space other cops. spaceships involved in the space battle, and they thought, oh, this is like an MMO, but like combined with Minecraft in space. Yeah. And it's like, no. <laughs> it's just a survival <laughs> game where you can leave the planet, go to another planet. But yeah, the fan response was pretty big. Better than Hello Games could have possibly yeah. anticipated. They went from being a company that made this little cartoony mascot motorcycle game to having one of the most anticipated games possibly in history. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I would We were talking yesterday about what games have we seen had that type of kind of anticipation since and it's hard to pinpoint one. People I don't even a little think, more I don't think, even think anticipation was that high for things like GTA 5 yeah, or, or yeah, Red yeah. Dead or yeah. even the biggest games in the world. Because this kind of transcended even beyond games. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This was yeah, this was a thing where newspapers were writing about No Man's Sky and yeah. people were buying consoles to play No Man's Sky. Cold game phenomenons it's usually after they launch. Things like Fortnite mm-hmm. and Pokemon Go, those are like people weren't anticipating them. They just blew up yeah, one exactly. yeah. So No Man's Sky Some people maybe, decided yeah. that they in order to meet said demand they would need some help from a publisher they couldn't self-publish this game like they did with joe danger because they needed didn't they, somebody to handle all of like the later kind of not to spoil anything but didn't they later end up self-publishing themselves on pc yes on pc yeah okay so uh, they that made, explains a lot okay so so they <clears throat> made a deal with sony sony yeah. responded Sony said, we want to provide you development funding for this game. We want to make this thing bigger and better than it's ever going to be. Mm-hmm. And Hello Games basically said, whoa, 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 pump the brakes. Yeah. 
we have enough money to make this game and we don't want to pump a bunch of money in it and to make it into this Goliath that we'll never be able to control. We just want help with the funding for promotion, marketing, and publication. Yeah. So they want... They wanted help printing the actual discs, yeah, oh, and yeah. making trailers. Because I know that, like that. physical Post version logistics was very, shit. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. they they weren't looking into any early access or anything. But I mean, yeah. was Sony searching for exclusivity deals at this stage yes. too as well? Okay, I think they saw they less to, like a Street Fighter Five. They were already going to put out a masterpiece of a game, so <laughs> right. they didn't have. They <laughs> saw they saw the fan response to capitalize no, on No that. Man's Sky, and they were like, yeah. "Well, if we can get this." Then we don't have to do a lot of work, and we'll have like yeah. an exclusive that people will have. And to new consoles just for. came out. At this yeah, point. that yeah. was we're gonna make no that man's sky dildos. No yes. man's sky flamethrower. <laughs> it was, was a month after the PS4. Right? Yeah, yeah, it was. I think it was less than a month. It was like two weeks. Jeez, yeah, that's the that's but, the stage that you do that in. Yeah, Sony kind of came in and <clears throat> and decided to take over marketing for the game. Boy, and, did they ever! Yes, and part of this uh, promotion, the the first anybody noticed of this partnership was. E3 2014, which yes. is about six months after No Man's Sky was announced. No Man's Sky was shown off on the main stage of Sony's E3 press conference. I remember this appearance yeah. very yes. well. Yeah, That was the one where the uh, the whole joke was born of zooming out and seeing a star system <laughs> and then zooming out and seeing a universe and then zooming out and having like every one of these dots is a planet you can go to and name and yeah. all that stuff. And uh, these guys... <clears throat> Turns out that Hello Games might have been in the wrong business. I think they should have gotten into marketing. <laughs> yes, they were yeah. very good at selling stuff. And they're very good at making games, don't get me wrong. No, they were good stage shows for sure, but they too. Were, yeah. Like, they were very good. Like, they had something. There was a philosophy. Yes, because that game. Sean Murray guy, sweet as he uh, is, yeah. is not the best presenter in the world. He was very shy and very awkward that on stage. That made it almost more endearing, though. It did. He was less like a Peter Molyneux like, figure and more like the guy that yes. revealed Yarny from he, Unravel. You could, tell, you could tell he was very yeah. excited about his own product, too. He believed. Yeah. This is when the fan response to No Man's Sky kicked it into <laughs> yes. overdrive. There's mm-hmm. a there's a uh, website called The Rap, and a writer named Phil Owen for The Rap blamed a lot of the issues on the marketing from No Man's Sky and said that the, this game transferred the field of video game marketing to be less about selling the game and more about creating cult light fandom huh. and even weaponizing that fandom. That's a good yeah, quote. But you feel like that's <laughs> yeah. not like the first time that could have hap- no, happened. No, not at all. Though, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're talking about a media, <laughs> excuse me, a media tactic that's been used for like 80 years yeah. prior to this. Yeah. And this know? is Sony. Yeah. yeah. But like, it was it was so easy for them. Like, so this is going to be a story about everybody on every side fucking up. Like yeah. we're not going to talk about how much Hello Games fucked up. We're not yeah. going to talk about the how much fans, Sony fucked uh, up. We're not going to talk about how much the fans fucked up. We're going to talk about how they all contributed. <laughs> it was a collaborative effort. <laughs> yes, they collaborated together in making this thing so disappointing yeah. and it set it, it definitely set a precedent for like game announcements yeah. to follow. You know, the fans they became very like cult like is a very good word to describe it. Like yeah. I, I don't have any exact examples here, but I did go back in my research and look at this. You can go like on Reddit, Reddit and yeah. organize it by date. <clears throat> oh, and I went back Twitter and reversed it and looked at the first couple posts from No Man's Sky's reveal. Oh, uh, that's got to be right really when they interesting. made the Reddit. Yeah. And people were like, pulling their this hair. This is partially out. the fault of the people that made that first trailer, but it's also like video game fans are weird because they don't understand how something like what they wanted No Man to Sky to be is not a reality. Right. Yeah. And they put hope in this little company that's like five people yeah. to make this vast world that like... Exactly, yeah. I hate to bring it up again, but like same... like. What Star Citizen like? They're trying to actually make something like that, Fuck, and yeah. if you just take any sort of glance at it, you can see like just the immense oh the cracks. The, yeah, just the, yeah. And, like how would you ever make anything like that? You know? Yeah, yeah. it's it's totally unrealistic. Yeah. Um, they, they kept just, pushing. They they, they could have they could have come out and said, "Whoa, pump the brakes! Like we're making this game. We're glad you're all excited for it, but." We just want to be real with you. This is not what you want. Instead, they leaned That's into so it. Hard. They did. So but hard. But it's like, how do you tell fans to not be excited for your I product? I know. I know. It, it, it's yeah. tough. It it's is. free marketing. Like, it is. It's, yeah. I, I don't blame them, but Sony really leaned into it. Like, they did. There was a tech festival by The New Yorker, one of the most pretentious magazines, <laughs> called Tech At Fest. With, with an awful yeah, name. Yeah, with, a, uh, with the ampersand, right? No, not or, ampersand. Not ampersand. The, the, a with the circle, whatever the at symbol, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and then later, 
in October 2nd of 2015, jumping a little bit ahead in the timeline, the game was shown off on yes. Late Show with Stephen Colbert. And I don't know and if you ever watched this video. No, what no. the fuck? I didn't Sean, right. Murray, Sean Murray was yeah. on Stephen Ugh. Colbert's... If, if I may interject a little bit, that... that Pitch on like it is the craziest thing. Like it, it, you should go back and watch it because it's it, it's like it, not only is it nuts that that was like on television, but like it was also the source that was used the like in reference the most when that outrage later came out down the road because like the quotes about the interactivity and in multiplayer were sort of like born from this interview uh. and like. The, the question was always out there beforehand about that topic, but here was where you saw a developer come out and say in an official back and forth, like, broadcasted, yes, you can find each other in the open universe and affect each other's worlds. And, like, it, it's... It, but he was like, the odds of doing that are pretty slim. And I don't, you know, like... and But I don't know if he got nervous or something, but it would... It, that was just a lie. Like I it was just kind of a lie. Like players found out pretty quickly once that thing was out that that was not a reality. Yeah, it probably suffered from literally what we just talked about. It's like you get you don't want to disappoint. You have yeah. an opportunity here to like make something great, and you don't want to disappoint everybody. You've already told them, and honestly, you don't want to disappoint your sales. Yeah, yeah. it's just that Colbert show thing was totally when people like grab their pitchforks, and it's a shame because it's like I'm sure you can see in that interview he's clearly nervous. Like he's not a PR guy. Yeah, like, no. You know, he's, yeah, because it's like, yeah, I, of course, I would love to have that stuff in those games. Yeah, you know but you mean? can't just say like, if somebody asks you a question that big, it's like, yo, does your game have this? It feels weird on cable being like, yeah, no. he's a programmer, yeah, like, and he's a programmer who's very excited about what he's done. Yeah, and because it was very, it was very it smart is, for the time. Yeah. We'll get a little bit into it something. It is kind of revolutionary, not to understate that point. Oh, but like, absolutely! Yeah, like I've never seen a game that loads. Like it has it's, its some yeah. issues, but it's got like at least on Xbox and no, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they they did a lot yeah. for sure. So this cult like fandom like reached out at parts of the world that you didn't think would fall for it. I found a really good interview, or not an interview, sorry, a like a podcast. There was part of a podcast that uh, Game Trailers did. Okay, yeah. uh, and. The, you know the guy that voices all the game trailers reviews. Yeah, I forget his yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, I did too. Uh, yeah. He was sitting on the voice. he was sitting on the podcast, and the, uh, some news came out about No Man's Sky, and they're talking about how they can't wait for this game. And mm. he like literally has that moment where he's like, "I feel like I'm a crazy person." Like he's sitting there, and he's like, "Yeah." They say there's infinite things you can do. You can get in a ship. You can mine stuff. You can like kill animals. That's like four things. It's not infinite. Yeah. He's like, "Tell me what the point of this game is. Yeah. Is there a story? Is there some sort of progression, or is it just?" And that's kind Minecraft. of where I was personally. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 You had to explain that to people when you were talking about Minecraft in the past. Like, what is yeah, this game what's about? The point? It's about it's like you nothing. Find the point. Yeah. But, but, yeah. Like, obviously, but like, also. Yeah. built so much better for that yes. to take yeah. place. My, Minecraft is infinitely more of a sandbox to, despite yeah. not having 18 quintillion planets. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, like, the whole thing is that, like, and the other thing is that people were, you know, people were like, man, you're going to buy the game, right? I'm going to buy the game. I can't wait for us to, like, partner up and play. Yes. And yeah, the dialogue after that first so trailer, good. people are just like, oh, this thing's going to have multiplayer. And they never said a word about it. No. Any. They never showed two people on screen at once. Yeah. People just assumed. Other than that first E3, and then... It was implied, but never explicitly it was, said. They never showed yeah. you looking at another character. Yeah. But ever. they also never said no. They that never that said no. They never said no. Yeah. Up until after the game came out, they never explicitly said <laughs> yeah. Said no, and we'll get to and that. And we'll get to that, yeah. Because yeah. once but, it came out, you bought it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, um, okay, we're going to go through two lawsuits that they faced. Real this quick. lawsuit's so fucking insane. This is before, <laughs> it, so came or? This is before it came this out? This is before it came out. This is, yeah. Uh, this first one, anyway. The, the, the second one, I didn't know at all. Yeah. So the first one, a lot of people have heard about. They had a lot of trouble right up until June of 2016, which the game was supposed to come out. We'll get to that. In June of 2016, it got delayed. And a lot of people think that this might be the actual reason it got delayed. Oh, this wow. lawsuit, not You'll find additional funny. work on the I game. You. <laughs> but UK telecommunications giant Sky Entertainment attempted to sue No Man's Sky over the use of the word Sky. They had a trademark Fuck over them. the word Sky. Oh okay, I'm not even joking. Oh, the There's sky. some, like, I listen to this guy, uh, Frisco. He's a grime artist, which yeah. is like UK rap, sure. fusion, yeah, yeah. jazz shit. It's really good, but... There are songs it. where he literally in the background is like, there's this like sound bit which comes in and go, Sky! Like they literally <laughs> always like say that shit in the background. Like that's how like tied to this fucking God. entertainment group. Did, like. yeah. Didn't, 
Uh, all right, never mind. I was gonna say I don't know if there's anything around Skyrim because that would have been really stupid. But I feel like no, maybe my there brain was. Came, oh my god, there is was, that real? No, no, not Skyrim. But there <sighs> was a Microsoft had introduced a cloud service. To oh compete, right, yeah. To compete Sky with Drive. Google Drive and Dropbox called SkyDrive, and they faced a similar lawsuit from this company for using the word Sky there. Jeez. Uh, like, <laughs> and that that just goes to show you how big. No Man's Sky had gotten that like, it got their Sky, attention. Like yeah. Skyrim didn't get any in any trouble for no. it, but No Man's Sky did. did. And yeah. the only other person that got in trouble for it was fucking Microsoft. <laughs> exactly. Like that's how yeah. big No Man's Sky was getting. No in, Man's like, Sky's gonna be bigger than Microsoft. Yeah. yeah. UK yeah. telecommunic. I, I that Bill Gates money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope that comp I hope all those people choke. No, this is this like, is I, very I, similar. Very much to the scrolls thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the scrolls yeah. thing. The scrolls thing. Um which Bethesda got a lot of shit for, but uh, that's unfortunately that's how the law works. Also, in like retrospect, th- I'm glad they sued that horrible piece of crap. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. This like, second, yeah. Sky is just doing like if you let something like this go by, somebody can later use it in an argument against you to be like, well, they didn't attack this, so like they don't really right. own the yeah, word Sky. Yeah, yeah. It's how the it's how the law works. And it's how the legal system weird. works. Yeah. Um, and then, okay, the second one, not necessarily a lawsuit, but this one's a lot more interesting. This was fascinating, yeah. Um, they got into an argument with a Dutch mathematician. Okay. <laughs> um, the procedural generation uh, of this game was put into question. People claimed that there was this super formula made by a Dutch scientist named, and I'm going to butcher this name, Johan Gillis. I'm just glad Gilles, you tried it before me. Think- in 2003. And there was a company, a Dutch company named Janicap, who he was the chief officer of research for, and they owned the patent on his super formula. And they were looking into making this super formula into some software program, some software program that could be used as in game development or any other kind of development. And it was very similar to the procedural generation that No Man's Sky had used. Did they ever actually use any That's of that? Interesting. And- so, I'll, so I'll get to it. Okay. Uh, Sean Murray had additionally mentioned this super formula in an interview because he was oh, very into math and he knew about it. Sure. But th- that led this company to be like, this looks similar and he knows about our formula. Mm. Is he using it? Did he because, just incriminate himself? Because we have a patent <laughs> on it and if he... But these people were not like the telecommunications giant like shitting on... They even came out and they said, look... We think No Man's Sky is very impressive looking, and we do not want to right. stop this game from coming out. We think it's great for this whole thing. But like, they're basically like, "Hey, you have to license this." But they're like, "But they're like, we're it. gonna, we have to talk to these people, and if we can come to the conclusion that they're using our formula, they're gonna have to pay us for it." Mm-hmm. And it never ended in a courtroom. What's interesting is that this thing actually ended at their headquarters. They invited a bunch of programmers from Hello Games in and had basically a meeting of the Man, minds. That's good. I wish yeah. more problems were solved that way. Like, like yeah, that's I was so. Just thinking, that's, like, okay, brilliant. obviously he's in, he's a programmer. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if he's into mathematics, how would he get even access to this? Like, he could know about like. He could know about the formula, but if it's patented and protected, well, no, how would he the, have yeah, access? Is that stuff out there? They so wanted, maybe he's just smart enough to have come a kind of across the same right. lines. Right. Yeah. So, that, I mean, so that's like, the worry. That probably that happens in mathematics. Have, yeah, it absolutely. Does. It does. Like, calculus was invented by two different people at like the same time. <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? so. yeah. like that was their worry. Was they're, they're a giant corporation, but they're basically like, right. we're going to meet with this guy and we're going to figure out how he did this. And if he did it similarly to us, all we want is a little bit of money and we want to put our logo on the game. Right. And say like, Not if the end you of the want, world. yeah. And they, they ended up meeting up and having like this weird meeting of the minds and they described, they each described the formula to each other. Yeah. And they found out that Sean Murray had come up with a different, different way of thing. doing it. Just like the game. And they were just that? like, all right, well, I hope sure. your game does well. Like, good job, Man, guys. Them, yeah. yeah, that's like, awesome. Like, that was no, no money, no lawsuits, just... Good, yeah. Just a bunch of math nerds getting together <laughs> and talking about math. I assume they're hammered. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the Dutch are trying to make up for all that horrible things they did for the whole of human history until the last hundred years. So, <laughs> what, Dutch be good. Do? <laughs> what do you mean, start the slave trade? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry, I was thinking a little more modern than you. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm I still know, mad about that. I didn't know how far back you were going. <laughs> also, wooden <laughs> shoes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, create capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> um. Our uh, our enemy of the podcast, <laughs> yeah, if you will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 
Hot Button's number one most wanted capitalism. Uh, so... They were in full-on swing of developing this thing. But you mentioned this did get delayed a couple times. Yeah. Like I said, it was announced in 2013. They had E3 2014, they were on the stage. E3 2015, they were on the stage yeah. again. They went to this tech festival in 2015. They it was voted on, most anticipated game, like, they went several on, years in yeah, a row. They went on Colbert Report in 2015. Or not Colbert Report, The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. They went on, or uh, yeah, the Video Game Awards has a most anticipated game, mm. and No Man's Sky was voted 2014 and 2015 most landslide. anticipated game yeah. by a landslide. Yeah. Like they had a good Jeez. thing going, but nobody yeah. knew when this game was coming out until March of 2016. After all this marketing has happened, uh, finally, Hello Games announced uh, June 21st, 2016, for a release date. Uh, the game was announced for PlayStation 4 and PC. Obviously, no Xbox because Sony was helping market it. Yeah. And it came in both standard and limited edition releases. The limited one coming with like an art book and themes and some comic or something. Yeah. Oh, exactly. I thought the limited and, edition was the regular one. Yeah. <laughs> and Austin's yeah. favorite, by the way, uh, a steel book case. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I, the, the I love the a steel book I would case. Say, too. I will it's say cool the box bo- art. Yeah. The box art for sure. No Man's Sky is. I, I just so. absolutely love. That's one of the funniest things. I'm glad you like mentioned that. Like the the thumbnail, like how the awful it's Windows cool tiles. Fucking, yeah, but, on the but like for thing. some reason, like at that like I get whatever we want to call re- aspect ratio, it yeah, looks so yeah. good. Yeah. It's, it's got a neat cool, color it's like palette pink too. And blue. Yeah, it's all yeah. Oh, dude, it's incredible. Yeah, no, it's very. But I just think the balls on them. They're releasing a limited edition when nobody like knew. Anything entirely what it is. was. I mean, like, I like me some art books I mean, from time cap- to time. You but... capitalize on the people. You're right. Like I said, like the box art was really cool, and it's like this. The whole box is the box art. We don't have any of the logos Just on there. Just a lot no of PlayStation confidence, thing. I guess. It's yeah, like, yeah. well, that looks really cool, and yeah. it did. It did. Um, the art that came maybe not. Enough. But even like right prior to Lost the Cracks, we're starting to show a little bit. But yeah. you know, pre-ordering. Uh, so, so in May of 2016, <clears throat> Hello Games then announced that they needed some additional time, and this is where the whole Sky lawsuit thing comes sure. into play. Right, that's where people because thought that it happened. they didn't announce the Sky lawsuit <clears throat> thing until after it was settled. Nobody knew about it while it was happening. Oh, um, weird. and okay. they they announced that in June when the game was supposed to be launched, but in May, a month earlier, they said the game is now pushed back to August 9th of 2016, citing that some key moments needed extra polish to bring them up to their standard. Standards. In addition to this, Common. Uh, Hello Games skipped E3 2016. They, they were supposed yeah. they were supposed to be on stage to show off the game as it was going to be coming out like the oh, next week. I didn't know they were supposed to be there. Yeah. Okay. And they instead decided not to show the game at all because they just needed the team to at not Sony's, work on a presentation. Uh, they needed good excuse. the team. They didn't want to show off their nightmare game <laughs> that they was about to purchase. The game went gold. The game went gold on yeah. July 7th, 2016. Which you know usually give it a month to print the discs and stuff like that, but the but the team wasn't done with the game. Yeah, the team was making it go gold. You know, this is sure. in these days like yeah. this is standard video. That's game why I protocol. read this and you're like, yeah, hey, that day one patch is pretty important. I was like, yeah, it always is, ain't it? Like, but right. in this game, it's very important. You're because right. It comes up. You're meant to play it online. Yes. Well, connected rather. So. But it, it'll come up in a bit. Actually, right after this, uh, the team continued to work on the game, and they were prepping a day one yeah. patch, which they said was very important. The game on disc was not the game they wanted it to be either. They were going to use that additional month to bring it up right. to standard still. However... Leaky ships. Yeah. Here. Two weeks before release, a Reddit user... This was so funny, ...was right? able to purchase an early copy of the game that was illegally obtained somehow Wait, through Let, eBay. Let's let's see if we can get Chris to guess how much they paid oh, for yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Guess how much they paid for this <laughs> first copy. Uh, $69. $420. Still not enough. Yeah, keep, keep $166. Going keep going. Keep going. Oh, not a funny number. Yeah. Oh, $911. Uh, higher than that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay. They paid a whopping $1,250. Yeah. For Is an, that pounds? No, it was American <laughs> dollars. His pounds would be um, more, right? For an early copy. This was the first anybody saw of a leak, but apparently that guy got ripped off because a bunch of other people also started obtaining leaked cop- early yeah. copies of the game. Yeah, man, I got over 10 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> what do you off, mean? Off the back of that truck, man. Yep. The thing about early copies of your game leaking is that you can try to plug the hole, but nobody who bought an early copy signed an NDA so they can post whatever whatever fucking videos they want. So all of these people, a lot of them being, you know, YouTubers and streamers, Mm -hmm. started posting early video impressions of the game. 
keep in mind, they are posting uh, early video impressions of a game that is not done yet. Is this kind of... Uh, yeah. Right. I was yeah. gonna, I was about to compare this to the Kingdom Hearts 3 thing going on right now with early copies of that getting out for Marked Up, but like I don't, I don't think it's... It's different because that's a single player game. Yeah, yeah. The, the the worry with Kingdom, the worry done. with Kingdom Hearts is I don't think anybody's going to be out there and post and be like, "Yo, these systems don't work as well." Right. They're, they're out there posting is, spoilers of the story, yeah. which is the issue. True, true. Yeah, this was. Yeah, guess what? It sucks. <laughs> no, it's, it's just totally incoherent. I mean, uh, oh, suck, something but... I missed earlier. Um, they had in their early pitches for the game, they had often said that like, "Oh, you're exploring <laughs> this Kingdom universe." Kingdom Hearts three fans. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm fucking credit card's gonna get shut off. <laughs> um, sorry. Continue. So, so they had said a lot. The the people wanted a goal, right? People are more than willing to play games like Rust and Minecraft for thousands of hours without having any explicit goal. But when you're marketing a game, people want to know yeah. what the goal is. And yeah, so their yeah. their goal was like, oh well, you'll keep exploring planets, and eventually you'll get enough ship fuel to get to the middle of the galaxy. Yeah. And once you reach the center of the galaxy, yeah. then you will see something fascinating. The of the cube. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but Sean space in the center of the galaxy. Sean Murray claimed that this would take. This was not something you could complete in eight hours. This would take somebody playing a very yeah, long, yes. long time. He never said how long, but it made it sound like this long was going to be an ongoing us, project yeah. for years or like, something. He made it seem like one of those things where like, we would just now be hearing a story about somebody reaching it yes. for the first time yeah, yeah. in yeah. Like, 2018, like and, two years after. And it would be enlightening. Yeah. But like the thing was... These people who got the game early, turns out that they did reach the center of the galaxy <laughs> in a matter of hours through some glitch. What did they find behind it, except for a trophy? The game crashed. <laughs> <laughs> so that's... Oh, man. I think he was planning for this to take way longer right. to the point where they were going to patch in something, something later in it, yeah. because they didn't think anybody could get there. Somebody found an exploit Jeez. that made them get to their center really fast. When you get to the center, it just crashes back to the PS4 dashboard. Prince, your princess shit. is yeah. in another universe. Um, yeah, I mean, because truthfully, if you go through that map, you can't even like navigate the map to the center of the galaxy. Yeah, yeah. And I've so, I've sat there for a good twenty minutes straight, holding forward, <laughs> trying to see if I could get there. Did you get to the center doesn't. of the universe? No. Okay, yeah. No, they fixed it now. Oh, yeah. The whole thing. Now it'll take five. I years. meant just navigating the map, not physically oh, flying oh, there. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Looking right, at the yeah. map. The whole thing. The whole thing. The whole the way it's they to take paced a while this, to get off the first planet. Yeah, yeah. The whole way they paced this was that you have to craft starship fuel. Yeah. And you can only craft, and it's very hard to craft starship fuel, and you can only craft enough starship fuel to get to like yeah. a galaxy away. It's supposed to feel and pretty. You're supposed to get to the, yes, you're yeah. supposed to get to the center of the universe. <clears throat> Very slowly through, but somebody found a Pokemon style glitch where if you did something, you could just duplicate your starship fuel. Mm -hmm. yeah. So people just filled their inventory with as much starship fuel as they could through this exploit. They and should then have encountered for that. Just flew right to the center yeah. of the universe. Yep. And, uh, you know, people were pretty upset about it, but the company kind of said nothing. Uh, Sean Murray came out and tweeted about it. He basically said, and I quote, uh, we've spent years filling No Man's Sky with surprises. You've spent years waiting. Please don't spoil it for yourself. That was his response, which is a good response. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah for yeah. real. I'll give it to him. It's, it's again, heartfelt. That's yeah. how I would, Loved, yeah. Love this dude. He's still, like, his heart is still, yeah. uh, like, he hasn't broken yet. Yeah. Well, we'll get there. Yeah. And then it turns out that not then only he did... shot up a mall three days later. Not only did this early leak happen, but yeah. as goes with games that are this highly anticipated, a lot of retailers ended up breaking the street date, Yep. which allowed more people to get their hands on the game. Including people on the press side. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was one of those things where reporters explicitly... I found examples explicitly from Kotaku and Polygon, although I think there were other smaller sites that did the same thing, but they were basically like... We signed an NDA, but like this shit's out there, and we we need to get clicks. Yeah. So they ended up buying game copies of this game, <clears throat> and a lot of people started just streaming playthroughs, posting playthroughs on YouTube. That's what you do. Why wouldn't you? <clears throat> and this broken street date ended up happening about August fifth, twenty sixteen. And, and this is around when the threat started to right, which yeah. is. <clears throat> about four days before the game was supposed to come out. And I had a, a lot of trouble finding this. Some people said there was an NDA. 
Okay. And some people said there wasn't. Like, some people hadn't signed Like, upon in, booting up the game? Or? Some people hadn't signed an NDA. The reason the servers were live at this point was because some people had gotten early copies and signed an NDA. And the NDA was supposed to be on launch day. Yeah. And a lot of people think, like, oh, if you put your NDA on launch day, then you don't want early word getting out there because it's going to be disappointing. Yeah. Which, <clears throat> again, they didn't say anything about. So, all Sony did was just try to take down all of the these videos. videos and they didn't say anything about it. So <coughs> and, and people, Twitch has policies against like streaming games yeah. that aren't out yet. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, people were getting banned and videos were getting taken down and that kind of just led to more negative press. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they 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 drew Hello Games ended up drawing a lot of criticism for not sending out early copies of the game. Right. They ended up making the review embargo the day of release, and a lot of people, some people got the game early, some people didn't, so some people were like, well, the review embargo is release day, but you, I have to didn't go buy it, so I can't, yeah. your and infinite you vast go, universe yeah. that's going to take me 20 years to play, I video can't game review training. it in a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so. I mean, they, were, they also uh, put out, like, a thing I saw that you, you wrote about how, like, they, they were going to wipe the servers anyway. Yeah. So all the planets that people are, are finding and naming, like Weed yes. Bill and Bonerland and stuff, were all going to yeah. get deleted. Yeah, so, mine was the Gamer Zone presented by Mountain Dew. That was, was like that your planet? planet? <laughs> Is it still out there? Yeah, I Chris, actually, Chris, you had to come up with some good names for planets. Uh, no, I never named a single planet. Are you serious? Absolutely. There's, I, there's yeah. so much room for comedy. I'm almost disappointed. I know. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> true. I did, however, find a because they auto name the planets when you yeah. find them, and, oh, then you can, really? and then you can rename them. Okay, yeah, right, I renamed right. all um, of them. Yeah, the, I found a planet. Called Anus One. I'm not even joking. <laughs> and then there was another. There was. You a, sure that wasn't someone else's plan? Absolutely, because because oh, you can't. The only way, like even nowadays, to find planets that other people have is through the new weird multiplayer yeah, thing. They've yeah, added, yeah, yeah, but yeah. We can get it all. Mine was. <laughs> it was. Uh, yeah, it was the Fun Zone presented by Best Buy. <laughs> And then I think like the hunger zone presented by Doritos. <laughs> yeah, I and think the I named smell zone presented by. I think I named the Galaxy Brand Land. <laughs> um, but yeah, Hello Games responded to the criticism they got for not sending out early review copies by basically saying, "There's a day one patch coming. All of these early videos don't include this day one patch." Yeah. They were like, "This day one patch is going to change things. Don't mm. worry." That's a video games ass video yeah. game statement right there. Um, yeah, also a no no. <laughs> so fast forward a couple days, August 9th. Launch day. Launch day. The game actually comes out. <laughs> this was a big deal. There were a lot of streamers streaming the game all at mm -hmm. once. And obviously, their servers were taking a big hit. I mean, I yeah, think a company course, this yeah. big cannot possibly. <clears throat> Handle that, uh, handle that kind of load. Yeah. Um, like you Dice know. can't handle it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking EA and yeah. Ubisoft can't handle it. Rockstar, Blizzard can't yeah. handle it. Activision, like, I don't think a company like this small could handle it. And they, they couldn't. There was a lot of server side issues. People would, you know, were rubber banding a lot. And people were, you know, they were mining materials yeah. and then, like, getting nothing out of it because the server couldn't can, fetch this, this right game, stuff. You, you, you have to play it online. Yes. Yeah. Like it's, it, in the beginning, it was an online-only game. Yeah. yeah. I believe now there's an offline mode. I, yeah, I believe there is with that. But update, um, you can... If if you're not online, you can in the still beginning it was get, online. Yeah, online. at least now you can get one of the resources. Like I think one of the money. I think there's like two different kinds of money resources. You can get one of them from submitting the data you have from finding. Oh, shit. really? So that yeah. involves okay. being attached to the server. To yeah. yeah, I see. Yeah, but yeah, the hype combined with a lot of issues, the game led to a lot of people streaming their first playthroughs on Twitch, and these first playthroughs did not present the best picture of this game. Obviously. When you have 18 quintillion planets or whatever, <laughs> you're going to come across some animals that got some weird butts or like <laughs> trees that don't quite look like trees yeah. or planets that look weird. It's the same thing with like Minecraft, where if you fuck with the generation in Minecraft enough, you'll get like floating islands and shit like I that. Think it's yeah. like, cool. It's cool. It's like a ground in the sky upside down and all this right, weird but, shit. But Minecraft is, is, is all cubes, so it, yeah. it looks cool. Yeah, like yeah, No Man's yeah. Sky was not all cubes. It was pieces of things. Yeah. So it looked, it looked buggy and weird and... You know, you had you know, weird animals, weird bugs, weird planets, uh, crashes. Yeah, and all the, re and the, the place. reviews were starting to come out too. They yeah. seemed middling, to say the least. I know Steam yeah. wasn't happy. Not that they ever are. But, yeah, you know. and, and not only you know, sixty-five days of static did the soundtrack, guys. Yeah, 
Negative negative reviews <laughs> from outlets, negative reviews from people, really bad word of mouth. You also had weird problems where that first trailer makes this game look beautiful. Yeah. And I don't necessarily think that the game looked <clears throat> worse than that trailer, but the problem was when you go from something that is put together for a trailer specifically to something that is procedurally generated, it's not going to look as good. No. no. And people are st- were also pretty, like, particularly bothered by that announcement trailer because not only is it, at the time, I don't know if it is anymore, but it was still featured on their and Sony's YouTube channel as well as the store f- page fronts on both Steam yes. and PSN. Yes, and we will, we will get to that. Okay. That, is, yeah. that is a big point uh, coming up. You mentioned the bullshot stuff yeah. earlier. Yeah, yeah. That will also come up, but... First, we have a very big problem that they ended up having, which we've mentioned earlier. The fan. In addition to all of these bugs and these crashes, people noticed one feature that they thought was going to be in the game was missing, and that was multiplayer. Mm -hmm. Now, Sean Murray had come out on Twitter and basically said, like, there's multiplayers in the game, don't worry. But, again, this excuse... There are so many planets. Yeah. There are 18 quintillion planets. <coughs> I have a memory very like I have a very vivid memory of this moment. Like, it's so yeah. bizarre because they're like it's moment. it's a feature, but please don't look for it. Yeah, he was like, don't waste your time trying to find each you'll other. You'll never well, find you'll never find like, each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the idea is the same thing. I remember hearing that like, oh, you yeah, you can search for hours and hours and never, cross, never. come across anybody. Yeah. Like, then what's the point of even having, having it in the game? It at all. <laughs> exactly. But again, yeah. But again, he said the chances of two players crossing in this giant universe was very slim. Don't, don't think of it as a multiplayer experience. Think of it as a single-player experience, which was upsetting enough to people because a lot of people bought this game to play with their friends. Play with their, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Do you need PlayStation Plus to play that? Uh, No, I don't think so. Okay, because that would have been a weird thing. Yeah. I mean, now, obviously, with Next, so, you need Golden Plus. But. Some players dedicated a lot of time to this, basically. People wanted this game to be multiplayer so bad, people started searching it out. Yes. Which led to a lot of problems. Uh, and this all came to a head when two Twitch streamers spent their time with the game since it came out to maybe about two or three days after launch just searching for the I, same I planet. I saw this video. Yeah. yeah. And they they managed to find the exact same planet. The one of them found it first. He named it. The other one went to it. It was named the thing he named it. They landed on the planet. They, they went around the entire planet. They yeah. came across the same lake and they stood... They were both streaming, yeah. and they stood in the same spot. Yeah. Guess what they and didn't find? looked at the same lake, and guess Dude. what they didn't see? What, Each like, other. <laughs> Dude, yeah. he, he probably never, ever saw that no, shit. Yeah. I, yeah. that, I can only imagine the look. Like, it, he was shocked. Yeah. Dude, he's... Uh, yeah, I know. Just to... Like, Dude, this is such a great underestimation of the fans. Yeah. Like, this mathematical that's what, formula. This is like a big thing with Destiny when it was just like, I ran there's so much to do, and you're like, you underestimate the amount yes. people play video games. That's what I said about like, like people making it to the center. It's like you have to calculate how insane people are. Yeah, yeah, it's hard, exactly. but like, but so at this point, obviously, like the 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 with that word of mouth does getting out. Like the like this flipped the hype beast like on its head. Well, as yeah. you wrote. Like, it, one, it could complete 180. There's like, one more thing. The regular v- edition of No Man's Sky was just a PlayStation 4 case with a little slip printed in it. Yeah. The interesting thing is that, and those slips are easy to print, the interesting thing was that the limited edition of the game was in a cardboard box with a steel book inside and an art book. Yeah, yeah. And this cardboard box was like had all this pretty <clears throat> art on it, and people noticed something very weird. In America, in the, with the ESRB, you don't have to change your rating if you have online features. Right. But yeah. Peggy, the European one, has more That's ratings. So, fucking so yeah. they have the they have Peggy they have like Peggy three, seven, twelve, seventeen, eighteen. So is there like a 21. minimum that you have to have yes. for a game to so go online? If a game has online, never heard it that. has to be rated Peggy twelve because people who are under twelve can't go online apparently. But no Man's Sky qualified for a Peggy 7 rating without the online. People found out that the limited edition of the box in Europe had a Peggy 7 sticker slapped over so the Peggy weird. 12 thing. Holy and shit. if you peeled the sticker off, it was the exact same content descriptors except one was missing, and that was online multiplayer. That's so bizarre. Wait, there was 12 on top of 7? No, 7 or, on, top on top of, of 12. 12. So it was like they when they printed that, it. they were like, yo, this game is multiplayer, and there was no press release to say that that wasn't true. Yeah. So then it was like everything was already printed, and they're just like, uh... Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> that's so weird. And like, like how they did that just, work? It's like digital versions, I guess, red is seven, but like. Yeah. And like the, the regular versions, they re, they just reprinted the slip inside because right. it's easy. Yeah. But printing this whole cardboard box, box and folding it again a, was like too much work. So oh, they just slapped a sticker over it. So Why funny. did they just keep it? Because it's like if you qualify for one, you obviously qualify for the other. I mean, I'm, other. I'm sure that wasn't their decision. That was Peggy's decision to be yeah. like, yeah, like. Because at that point, they needed the ratings to be consistent. So, like, uh, if digitally in the other boxes yeah. say that it's 7, like, you can't have, why is the special edition rated 12? Yeah. Like, so, basically, this is the, the, the whole downside. Like Randy said, the downside of weaponizing fandom is that yeah. when you weaponize your fandom against other people and then you disappoint them, the weapon gets turned on you. <laughs> And this, this fandom went from a cult into an angry mob. Rabble, very rabble. Very quickly. Rabble, rabble. People were not happy with No Man's no. Sky. And this is where I'm gonna, I want to emphasize the point that this is no one's fault in particular. Yeah. I think this Hello is fan Games, culture's like, fault. Like, Sean Murray, God bless his heart, such a sweet guy. Yeah. He just wanted people to love his, his mathematical formula. And, <laughs> and, he, and it's he, a good formula. he was told yeah. how to market it probably by Sony. And he said what he thought people wanted to hear, which was, like Randy said, it's hard to tell your fan base, like, hey, slow down, don't be as excited for my game as you are. Yeah. But he should have, because they got this grandiose idea in his head of something that was not nearly as grandiose as they thought. Fans turn fast. Yeah. yeah. And then Sony Star took Wars his words and rolled with them and just ran this all into the marketing. I mean, look at look how awkward the guy is. Any one of us knows this, oh, yeah. like the anxiety oh, would yeah. take. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. If somebody was like, does your game have multiplayer? I'd be like, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't kill me. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Please don't kill me, yeah. Don't exactly. burn my ass down. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the 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 fans, and and, and also, I blame mostly on the fans. Well, I, I do too. But also, but, when this when when this stuff started coming to light, Sony really threw their hands up. Like Sony was like, "Hey, we just we just gave them." A yeah, they, venue. and there was a, there was a lot of finger pointing. Basically, everybody was super mad at both companies, and Sony was like. We just paid for the marketing, and then Hello Games was like, Sony wanted us to market it like a big game, and it's I, not. And yeah, then, like, like it, I wish... I, they threw them under the bus, and I wish I could find that the fucking quote about it, yeah. about how they like set them up and then kind of smacked them down. So, yeah. Sony? Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm, not, I'm not sure if you have it. We I don't need I could, that to know that Sony's probably... Mm -hmm. No, purpose. but it was, so it was like... There was, there was a later interview with someone from Sony where they were just being like, hey, they didn't know how to make the game we thought. Like, it, like it, was, it was mean. Like, it was, it was genuinely... Oh, yeah. yeah. There were a lot of things, like... This, you know who deserves a lot of this blame? Mm. Uh, is fucking Jeff Keighley. Aww. Love the guy. He's the, but I love him. He he got very excited for this game, and I think he fell... He gave it a stage for... He, yeah. he fell a little susceptible to the marketing, too, because he was obviously a big part in the game getting as popular as it did, so they yeah. brought him into the office and, like, showed him... And he was like, this is incredible, stages. I need to Yeah, and he told everybody how incredible yeah. it was, and then later, after the game came out, he was like, well, they showed it to me, and I was like, uh-oh, this game's not going to be what everybody wants it to be. And like, still, he came yeah. out later and said, like, they were not onto something, but I didn't say anything. I'm sure he had people after him, too. Yeah, it's it sucks. Yeah, yeah. okay, I found Nobody it. Nobody wants to get DOS. No. <laughs> I found it. Uh... Eurogamer caught up with Shuhei Yoshida, president Shuhei of Sony's Shuhei, World yeah. Studios at TGS, and he said this to say, I understand some of the criticism, especially Sean Murray is getting, because he sounded like he was promising more features in the game from day one. It wasn't a great PR strategy because he didn't have a PR person helping him, and in the end, he's an indie developer, but he says their plan is to continue to develop No Man's Sky's features and such. He didn't have a PR... That's what you're supposed to do! Yeah, that's yeah, what exactly. yeah that's, That was literally your role in this fucking... Entire endeavor. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it was Sony's job to control the response and, and, and show that game the way it was meant to be shown. You don't fucking dedicate 45 minutes at your two-hour E3 presentation to be like, this is going to change games and, and play be like, only... Whoa, like, he promised yeah. us something and we're like, he's a bad PR person. He's a programmer. Yeah. You have you have legions of PR people hired yeah. on your company. And you put like, them on stage them. multiple times, yeah. multiple years. Like, yeah. like yeah. every year they're designing their like their E3 doc of being like, well, we're going to dedicate this much time to No Man's Sky. And then it's, you know, it's just like... One more, one more thing. Somebody found a game-breaking bug with the pre-order ship. So if you pre-ordered the game, you got a special ship. But there was a bug with the ship that they didn't test where you would land on a planet and then the ship would disappear, which would leave you stranded on that planet and kind oh, of defeat no. the whole purpose of No Man's Sky. Uh, 
Um, Boy. So that that was an issue. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, and then, so, game came out in August, in September of 2016. This, this, man, not, uh, this man, Sky, yeah. <laughs> where your ship disappears. <laughs> so it didn't take long for uh, the lawsuit. This, this, right? this was not a lawsuit. This okay. is where we're going to get into... I think people tried to sue, but we've talked about this a lot. There's not Little a lot. Grounds. There's not a lot you can do to sue for false advertising in video game marketing because their rules are very weird, and I'll get into that. Um, the UK advertising agency. It's like suing a movie uh, for like stains in the trailer, yeah, not being in the film. Exactly. They started investigating claims of false advertising in relation to No Man's Sky's marketing. Now, games do this shit all the time, but No Man's Sky was big enough and disappointing enough. Yeah. They were actually willing to investigate this. Uh, these claims stated that the materials in the advertising were not representative of the game experience and that yeah. there were features marketed that were not in the final game, like multiplayer. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're talking about screenshots that were early that looked a lot better than the final game did on the Steam page. And but, like, in the Steam trailers, page description, it does say, like, hey, this is a multiplayer yes. game. Yeah. Hello Games, this is where we get into the weirdness of it all. Hello Games argued that the procedurally generated game like this is hard to pin down and market because you can't market a feature and then expect every player to come across that feature because there's 18 quintillion planets. Yeah. And you're never. I'm sorry, kind of a bullshit excuse. Though. Yeah, a little it bit. Is. Yeah. Um, Technically, put like he, no, he technically correct. Account. Yeah, the best like kind it, of correct. I, yeah, the best kind of correct. <laughs> like it, it, at this point, the narrative too is also starting to stretch beyond games again. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. And, and and essentially, what came down to was like, well, you can't really say false advertising for a video game when a trailer looks better than the final game because video games change in development. It happens uh, all the time. You can't. There's not a single game. That hasn't the, the, changed the, from the its development. I want to sue who, uh, who made Dead Island for that. <laughs> the UK advertising agency ruled that the marketing was representative enough of the final experience and chose not to take any action. Right. Sure. Which only went to piss off people more. Yep. We're now in September of 2016, and the interesting thing is that the internet was essentially, like I said, they were an angry mob. They had their pitchforks and their torches out. Ready? And they an were, angry mob? <laughs> they were standing outside screaming for someone's head. Yeah. And the, you know, Sony came out and said, like, hey, No Man's Sky, like, Sean Murray's a fucking liar. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> and basically, like, he... Anyway, you should pre her Bloodborne. He was yeah. the PR guy. Like, the, the Hello Games Twitter account is his Twitter account. Because there was, like, four yeah, yeah, people in that company. Yeah. And that Twitter account went dead silent after launch. Yeah. People were tweeting it, asking him questions, and saying a lot worse things. Um, and they did not say a, th a damn thing. Uh, this made yeah, every problem worse. Uh, <laughs> Gamers do not love being ignored, yeah, as it turns out. People thought they'd been tricked. They wanted answers, and Hello Games had just disappeared, and all communication had stopped. So um, no, no Joe Danger 3. It wasn't until November of 2015, which August to November... I don't feel like doing math. That's a couple months. Uh, when the anger had died down some and people had just stopped playing the game, Hello Games then resurfaced to announce their first update called the Foundation Update, which I'll get to a little later. This is the first that anybody had heard of No Man's Sky in a couple of months. And now the people who enjoyed the game were out and they're like, yeah, we're ready for more content. But it was later stated that the silence was due to the studio's relatively small size. Like I said, they don't have lawyers they don't have pr people yeah. it's a bunch of programmers yeah. who like space or whatever and the negative reception had basically just destroyed all of their lives like yeah. there was like four guys and they were just like i think at this point hello games is a lot bigger i should stop saying four guys because by the time no man's sky came out they had a lot of help but the big people for the most part for the most part there yeah. were there were a couple people who were getting all of the blame mostly Sean Murray yeah it's um, easy to lose i imagine i imagine it's easy to lose morale in like a, oh, that, yeah. in like that kind of environment and they you, you know, know they mean? stated like the the negative reception had affected them so harshly they began receiving death threats bomb threats they had to evacuate their offices while they were trying to work on God. updates and there's it's never explicitly stated anywhere but my theory is that they just decided to let the hate let the angry people leave before yeah, they wanted before announcing any further plans to the people who are a little more rational. Yeah. Uh, I mean they also had a lot of work to do, but yeah, yes. totally. Like you and guys were being dicks, so Yeah. I cannot state how much I love this guy, Sean Murray. He he is it's so like 
like Randy said, it's so heartfelt. I think the reason that the pitch worked so well in the beginning was because you could tell this guy was like not a PR person. He's not yeah. feeding you. He's feeding you lies, I guess. But he's not. <laughs> he believes them himself. It's not like, the same he is thing very, as a businessman. Feeding he is you very lies. excited about what he's doing, and yeah. he wants you to be excited with him. And the interviews with him before yeah. the game come out, he is just smiling the whole time. He is like. I'm glad so many people are so excited. Let me explain the mathematics. And people are like, no, we're good. And he's like, no, wait, but like, and then like, but then you see him in interviews after. Once this update thing comes out, people start, people start interviewing him. There's a, there's a famous thing. There's a famous interview where E3, I believe E3 2017, Jeff oh, Keighley no, has an E3 show, yeah. and he sat Sean Murray down and basically like gave him like that hard interview. Where he's like, "What happened?" And oh, like you yeah. can see it in his eyes that just like the world has just beaten the optimism yeah. out of him. <laughs> like his like the smile is just gone, mm. and he's just tired, and he just doesn't want to be alive anymore. <laughs> like it's so sad, oh. but um, yeah, <laughs> that's fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> But he, you know, they they persisted. They, I think they were they were victims to the hype, and I think they, you know, p- partnering with Sony, they wanted the game to come out soon enough that they were like, well, this will be good enough. But like Randy said, they didn't do a early access thing because yeah. Sony doesn't do early they don't access. Have one, yeah. So they instead it. they just released the game, let people get mad, and then eventually the game as we know it is what they intended the game to be from the start. And yeah. uh, I'm going to go through a few of the updates, and then we're going to talk about... This you is, didn't play it, Randy. I didn't, but I knew that they had their like Final Fantasy fourteen Realm yes. Reborn-like moment. With That's this when thing. me and Chris played it, because yeah. I know Chris yeah. played it on Xbox, yeah. and it didn't come out on Xbox until... Way later. Yeah. Way later. Well, that when was it, when but no it was funny Next because when Was it, it this out. year? Yes. It was, yeah, it was this year July. last year. Oh, okay. Because I know by the point it oh, came wait, out on Xbox. This year being 2018. I'm sorry. Yeah, when we sorry. record this. By the when time you listen to this, Xbox, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are having a way better time, which is reflective of things like the Metacritic user scores and stuff. Or, yeah. And the official scores and stuff like yeah. that. Like, it, it, there's a huge gap between like when this game yeah. was. When it was. So, it's no longer No Man's Lie. <laughs> now it's No Man's Lie. I'm sure sky. somebody fucking said that. <laughs> there's no way they didn't. Yeah. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the updates for the game, which kind of set the game back on the right path. Eventually, this, this list of things they added is staggering. Yeah, like, eventually yeah. the game became what people thought it was, which this is probably one of the best turnarounds in video game history, maybe except for like Rainbow Six Siege, I think. Is, oh, Siege is a good example. But like, yeah. Yeah. I'll say The Division, which not, yes. also I liked, had yeah. an incredible the, the, turnaround. The foundation for The Division wasn't as no, broken as this. As yeah, but, but I mean, just like... I know like, what you mean. Just though. overall game. So November 2016, they announced uh, the foundation update, and that was when they added things like base building. Although it was very <clears> rudimentary, <throat> they added freighters where you could literally own freighters and bring your materials to them, and they would That's hold cool. it and transport it to different systems. They mm-hmm. added new game modes. They added a survival mode that gave, made the game way harder, hmm. where you had to like drink and stuff yeah, like that. Geez, they, yeah. they Some added, people want that. Yeah. yeah. For sure. They added like a, I think they added a, like a creative mode, if I'm not mistaken, What's where that? it's like, yeah, it just you know, unlocks everything for you. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. It's just okay. like you can you can go into the game of zero consequence. There's no dying, and right. you just like shape the thing. Is as there you still want like the to. law enforcement that comes after you? Or? I don't think so. Not okay. creative no, mode. No, yeah, I don't think um, so. You just get access to all the base building. Yeah, okay. and, that's too. cool. No okay. materials required. You just make whatever base you right. want. Right. Yeah. And then March 2017, the Pathfinder update, which they added a lot more exploration tools and some new vehicles to help you get around planets and stuff like that. Nice. Because they had the spaceship, but once people were on the planet, they had to walk everywhere or use their spaceship to to fly, and people wanted an easier way to get around. August 2017, they added what is called the Atlas Rises update, which is... (laughs) Actually, the biggest one. Yeah. This is when they added uh, multiplayer. About time. Yeah. Uh, one year after the game came out. This was their first anniversary they released okay, this update. Right. Uh, multiplayer came out. And single player stuff, too. Like they yeah, added more as well the, as yeah. a story mode yeah, and like expanded s- lore. Yeah. And then kind of radio silent after that for the better part of a year. Yeah. Until... It turns out the reason why they went Radio Silent was because in July 2018, not only did they announce that No Man's Sky was finally coming to the Xbox One and that they were out of Sony's little, I guess it was probably like a two-year agreement or whatever. They announced that 
No Man's Sky Next was coming. And No Man's Sky Next was the big update. This improved the base building. This added frigate fleets, which were seen in the first trailer. Mm. This improved missions, added multiplayer missions, and improved pretty much every system in the game. Yeah, there was like a third All the person. Gener- like yeah, you play it in third, third person, person like camera. Oh, yeah. They added in like character customization. They added in better <clears throat> generation for plants and animals and planets. And jeez, but in, like and Chris said, they they rewarded you for discovering stuff. And right, yeah. They also announced they were going to work harder to communicate with their audience. They were going to work harder to improve. And since then. This game, since July, this game has received weekly updates. That's impressive. Yes. Mm. And they've had two big updates since then. October 2018 was the Abyss update, which finally added, like, exploring underwater The stuff featured in that, like, yeah. first first trailer yeah. and stuff, yeah. Uh, and November 2018, the Visions update, which in- introduced a whole bunch more types of environments and plants and animals. God, what, do you, what would this have been if it launched like this in this state? Like, you know what? Honestly... Still very middle of the road. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I think a lot more people would have been appeased. I agree. Yeah. I think there would have been less anger. I think it would have kind of just been a game that was like, that was really good. Yeah. It was fun and then faded to obscurity. It's still not necessarily something I'm like, arguably, looking for. Arguably, it's but... horribleness kind of... I oh, think made maybe, the, the, it made maybe, that stuff stand out some more longevity. Well, I mean, it, the funny thing is, like, we, we watched the Game Awards not too long ago, and one of the funniest things about it was how much influence where this game is now has had on new games coming out. Oh, like, yeah. like people are now trying to copy that formula, and it, and it's interesting because it's like the 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 dialogue before this would have been like, "Yo, here's the game that you originally promised," but. Fixed, and now it's more of like, hey, did you like that game? You probably did. Right now, you'll probably like this too. Like, yeah. it's, so it, now it's it's funny that it's like No Man's Sky is at at this point in its development is starting to become a genre. Like, it's a player unknown situation. Where, oh yeah. Like there are, it is proven through the people who have come back or have jumped on now that that's something that a lot of people want. Even if it, yeah. even if the execution isn't necessarily, you know. All right. So yeah, we could talk about kind of our experiences with it now i know you got into it when it came out on xbox one yeah we never really experienced the the early days of all the bugs and stuff yeah. i yeah. i always had an interest to in, know i i bought fallout 76 i'm into games that fail miserably i want to see how it's they fail interesting failed. for sure we played but, through all of the quiet man yeah <laughs> I, I, I don't i don't I never ended up buying No Man's Sky just because it looked boring but when No Man's Sky next came out and they added multiplayer I was like, okay, I'm into this enough now. And I, I'm i not into survival games or, like, Minecraft. Yeah. Like, I don't play a lot of Minecraft, but they hooked me a little bit. Like, I played No Man's Sky next for a good maybe eight hours without mm. realizing it. Like, I was kind of like... definitely one of those time sinkers. Yeah, games, sure. for sure. I was kind of like, I'm good. Sounds like a podcast game if you want it to yeah. be. Yeah. No, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. listen to Listen to podcast. music or just... Or have conversations with people that you're playing yeah. with. Just like, but, like, I... I enjoyed my time with it, but then, like Chris said, I was like, that was neat. I'm done. Yeah. 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 Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah. But the interesting thing is I have up here, so they don't expose a lot of numbers for PlayStation or Xbox, but you can get numbers for Steam. Right. So I yeah. found it an interesting thought experiment to kind of go through and list the numbers for this game and where it was at because it's no, very yeah. interesting. So when, when the game came out, it averaged about 36,000, 37,000 players on Steam. On Steam? That's low. Eh. I think I a mean, lot of, I think title, a lot of people but... played it on PS4. But, oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, but the peak players at launch was 212,000. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, that puts it in perspective. That was bit. in August of 2016. One month later, the numbers are recorded as being 2,000 mm. players average and about 10,000 peak. A month after that, they went down to 2,000 peak players. Okay. And about this makes seven, this return feel way more significant. 750,000. or so, Sorry, 750 average players. Oh, That's 100. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> mm. Mm. Then, you could text everybody. Yeah. So then plays New Man's Sky. we went from that 700 to about 2,000 average and like 8,000 peak when the foundation update finally came out. Okay. And you'll see these numbers crawl back down to about 1,000. And then when they released the next update, it jumped back to 7,000. And then it, it stayed around the 1,000 mark again until oh, they released the but multiplayer. But then when Atlas Rises came out, yeah. When they released the multiplayer and story update, it jumped back up to 20,000 peak players, wow. about 5,000 average. Hmm. And then it dipped back down to 1,000 mostly. 
and then July 2018 hit, and it went from 2,000 peak players to 100,000 peak players. That's when No Man's Sky Next came out. Is Next just a free update on PC and PS4? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It went from 1,000 average players in June of 2018 to 14,000 average players in July, and then 30,000 average players in August. So it's still going um, steady. Yeah, and and they've dropped back down now. I think their their average play counts are probably about a, a thousand, five thousand now hmm. on Steam. But like they were never going to get back all the people that were super hyped for the game. But they did a decent job of kind of recovering. Right. From it. Yeah. And you know, right. people are still excited to hear about updates for this game. A lot of people went back to it and found it to be a much better game. Well, yeah, like I said, I I, I remember all this happening. Mm-hmm. And then the only reason I bought it, it was on sale, and I was bored. oh really okay. Yeah, I was just bored. I that was, seems I like a good, good board game. Play. Yeah, that seems I was like a good like, game you know to play. Fuck for it. Like I've heard, you know, this is out of how much did you buy it for on Xbox? Was it thirty, forty bucks? Okay, I yeah, remember yeah, yeah. like, and I ended up splitting it with uh, the person I share our account Xbox with, yeah. account with. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I was like, I you, you want to invest in this? You know, twenty bucks, whatever. I'm actually kind of surprised that this game never came out on gold or like as a free month game or yeah. PSN or anything. Yeah, but, yeah I, I mean, think it we will, probably. I enjoyed it. We had fun playing the multiplayer for a little bit. I remember you describing um, it. It's actually sounded it, like it a was, pretty It was time. a cool game and I played it for probably about 20 hours, 30 hours or so. You got what you pay. Yeah, I got that's... a lot. I got my money's worth for sure. Yeah. I got a lot of good times to just enjoying the landscapes and sure, like yeah. this. I, it was more about like what I wanted to do. Once I'd reach a goal, I'd be like, all right, I'm bored of this game. But like, oh, I have a new goal. Right. And yeah. I'd do that. And then just flying around is kind of fun sure. to a certain point. Or yeah, being totally. like, oh, I want to see if I can fly into a stun. Yeah. And then it takes you like 45 minutes. And I'm just like reading. <laughs> I'd my see that being a good game like, to share with people, too. Like, it's. Yeah. We had a lot of fun on the uh, multiplayer because I, uh, I went through a black hole. Can you attack other players? Yes, maybe. I don't okay. know. I didn't really. Test I don't know if it. your party can run into other players players party or yes. it's meant to be a you can but experience. we didn't it, oh, i really? think it was like like the original style like the chances of finding somebody right was still i ran into someone else. very did you really yeah. did they shoot at you or did you shoot at them no okay oh right. i did run into people and one of the updates there's like portals that you can go through and it takes you to like the shared planet where there's like all this oh there's like a on. hub they added like it's a hub not like a kind of? hub okay. but it's like it'll take like you to different planets. I didn't follow. It's something to do with the story, right? Where okay. Everybody's there doing something. Something else, and, like, but you I actually ran into like probably eight or ten people on the planet. They probably like, created that scenario so you could actually oh, see yeah, that, see like, people. hey, this game is multiplayer. Well, me and uh, our friend actually were playing it, and like, I was like, "Stay here. I'm jumping in this black hole. I need like an anchor in case I get lost." But when you go through one end, you can't go back. Right. So I was just stuck somewhere else. Like we had to literally <laughs> glitch the game That's to get funny. me to get back to where. I was. Oh, jeez. <laughs> like, it was a fucking nightmare. That's my biggest qualm <laughs> with this game. Black holes are 3D objects. It was not that and, in the game. It the was just a flat thing that you flew into and it pulled you. It was dumb. Black <laughs> holes would be spheres. It's not fucking flat things. I hope you're listening. But the thing, the thing <gasps> I will say, Murray. too, is that the art in that game is is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the aesthetic Absolutely. of it, I mean. Like they, they, I was, was going to say that, I, that some of the, the designs of the creatures and stuff never really based, grabbed me. I based, like the color palette. But well, the creatures got a lot better. Oh, be sure. Because my impression of a lot of the visuals of this game is that early stuff. I found very few of the, like, the really big ones. Sure. Like, it's really, really cool. very yeah. colorful. Yeah. It's okay. based a lot around... Because a lot of the... T- when I saw it, a lot of the creatures looked like they were made in sport. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, like, it's based a lot around like a combination of sort of like the whimsy of, of a Star Wars wars okay combined with like the pulpy sci-fi of like a 2001 pulpy. right okay. that's actually a really really good yeah i like my sci-fi a little grittier yeah, but it's, yeah. It, it's and it's neat. it's it's very interesting but i yeah it's i think it's one of those cases where people wanted it to be this game that it's not and it ended up being a very good version of one of these type of games. Right. A survival game, an exploration yeah. game, but I'm not into those. Enough for people to want to copy. But it's still, yeah, it's still, you know, This is like the most interested. classic case of don't buy the hype. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I was about to say, what did we learn? But I, I mean, we... I, I think yeah, the industry, like I think, well, I don't think the internet will ever learn anything. But I think the industry... <laughs> Absolutely not. I think the industry learned a lot. You saw a lot, and I don't know if you can attribute this exactly to No Man's Sky, but you saw... At the E3 announcements afterwards, you saw a lot of games where they're like, well, we're going to announce a game and then release it in a couple months. Like, yeah, we're not going to let was hype build up that while. much anymore. No. Which, good. I mean, well, I mean you saw it with... Uh, well, yeah, but, but here's the funny thing, though. I mean, at least regardless of quality, Fallout 4 and 76 were both announced months before they came out. 
And, and you know, obviously they turned it differently, but it's like, I, I like the idea of, like, like Sony is in a weird place right now because they're like, what if we show you some stuff that looks incredible, but it's like years away. Yeah. When like, when I would say like Microsoft stuff is a little more focused, like they announced that they like, you know, have other companies that they're working with now, but like it, a lot of the times it's, it's stuff that's kind of on the horizon to make it feel more real. Yeah. But, you know. So I had an idea for an outro, but okay. I was doing a little bit of Googling while we were talking, and I found two great quotes from Sean Murray himself. I think they're a good place to sure, end on. Sure, yeah, yeah. Number one, he says, I remember getting a death threat about the fact that there were butterflies in the original trailer, and you could see them as you walked past. Oh but God. then there weren't any butterflies in the launch game. I remember thinking to myself, maybe when you're sending a death threat about butterflies in a video game, you might be the bad guy. Hmm. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> I, no, very I much agree. agree. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the final quote I'll Can't say. You called me out like that. Though. Yeah. And by the way, this won't play in the audio, but there's a little there's a picture of the guy. Look at him. Look how sweet yeah, he is. Yeah, he looks like a nice guy. Yeah. Uh, look at his, look at his yeah. checkered plaid shirt and he could use a hug. that smile on his face. Uh, <laughs> it says, "The internet is really good at knowing when somebody made a mistake." Yeah. It's not necessarily the best at determining the most appropriate response, but it is really good at knowing when somebody has messed something up. We definitely messed up a whole bunch of communication. I've never liked talking to the press. Oh. I didn't enjoy it when I had to do it, and when I did, I was naive and overly excited about my game. Wow. There are a lot of things around launch that I regret, and I would do differently. Man. Yeah, yeah, that's that's so nice. How do you, how do you still have that opinion after people say that they threaten your family and your home? Like, like, like you find a quote from most game developers who were broken at that point. They just be like, they they just be like, you fucking ass! I don't know what to do. Like, I'll kill you with a butterfly. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right. But I think that's it. Did we do it? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. maybe next time a game launch you're considering gets you excited. Sending, sending a death threat about butterflies. Yeah. Maybe don't. Yeah. And uh, with that, be safe, consumers. Do you want to? You guys want to plug some twitters some, and whatnot? Some twitters? Yeah. Yeah. At butterfly death threat. <laughs> <laughs> sure you can find me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We're uh, band, at man. Hot Button Cast across yeah, the board. We're on everything. Consistency. We're Facebook, on, Twitter, yeah, fa- Instagram. We're on all four of the social medias. That's all they are. <laughs> Wait, what's three? the fourth one? Oh, uh, uh, no, what's, what's that? Tumblr? Tumblr. <laughs> we yeah. got banned from Tumblr because Gru- of porn. Yeah, yeah, Groupon. True. <laughs> <laughs> LinkedIn. Yeah. Oh, damn it. We're, I think somebody else already made the joke. If you want us, we're uh, on Google Plus, but they're going to shut that down in a couple months. So. Yeah, exactly. I thought it already was shut down. No, it starts down in like April 2019, which might be when this podcast comes out. Yeah, all right, yeah. That'll work perfectly. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Chris I something. I'm uh, Restart Randy. And I'm at Austin Blakesley. Yeah, if you remember. Yeah. All right. <laughs>